show your support. Like, share and subscribe. I am that British guy and welcome to my review for the PlayStation Plus free games for the month of December on PlayStation 4. Now quickly before I begin I did release a little something on Twitter and Facebook earlier in the week basically just quickly going over why there were no videos for this in November. I was involved in a slight car accident, no major damage done thankfully to those involved there was a bit to the car but uh, yeah it was a bit of a nightmare after that and the month just sort of ran away with me unfortunately but I'm back now without any further ado let's get started right this month on PlayStation 4 we have three games we have Darksiders 2 we have Kung Fu Panda Showdown of Legendary Legends and for the VR we have Until Dawn Rush of Blood and this game was available last month as well this is the second month for that particular game so let's start off with Darksiders 2 and this is the death innovative edition so it's got all of the DLC packages with it as well now before I start with this game as a little side note I haven't played the first game and don't know anything about it so I apologise if there are bits and pieces that seem quite obvious to fans of the first game that I'm not particularly mentioning here. Um, that's more my ignorance than any problem with the game. Um, but I'm just going to sort of take everything that I've experienced in the game at face value and let you know what I think about it. Now, in this game, you control one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, Death. And basically, the premise of the game is that your brother War is being held captive and it is your job to free him. Now he is being held captive because humanity has been completely wiped out and Death's mission basically is to undo that crime so that War can basically go free. So he has sort of charged himself with the resurrection of humanity. So you play through various different stages, they sort of open out and then close in on sort of smaller areas where you kind of need to get to the, the end of a designated path, um, collect certain items, fight the boss at the end of that to sort of progress the story on a little bit further. And as you go the map is just filled with sort of various level minion type characters that sort of change and grow and develop as you go through the game and there is a strong emphasis on as I said the four horsemen um, and kind of other mythological gods and demon type creatures like the creators basically the whole premise of the lore of the game is that there is a very fine balance between the creators and the destroyers the light and the dark story that we know of and have seen played out in various different mediums many many times before but that certainly doesn't make it any less engaging in this instance and as I said you control death and level him up very much in terms of sort of an action RPG earning him level ups and different abilities both physical and magical or in this case sort of arcane it's named as in order to progress through the game and defeat sort of stronger bosses as you go through now I don't know how much of my experience was impacted on what was in the DLC I'm guessing probably not a lot um, because as with these reviews, obviously I can't play through an entire sort of 30, 40 hour game every single month. Because I'm covering now seven games on three different platforms. So that's just, it's not an impossible. So I give myself a fair few hours with the game just to really get to grips with the, the bare bones of it. So I appreciate my synopsis of the overall story was quite brief. Um, but that was sort of as far as I was discovering it also I don't want to give any really obvious spoilers away 
to anyone because I want you to experience this game for yourself. But it had me very, very engaged. I really, really enjoyed playing through it. I look forward to continuing it myself in my own time. The fact that it comes with all the DLC as well is amazing. I mean, I haven't looked into exactly what um, is encompassed within this DLC, but the fact that it comes free with it anyway is brilliant because they could have easily just given you the sort of bare bones basic version hooked you into it and then sort of made you or at least persuaded you to buy the DLC as well but they haven't done that they've given you everything the controls and everything for death are very very simple um, at times it sort of has gone down the line of sort of a, a button masher but as you, I, I kind of get the feeling that as you develop through the game and unlock other special abilities and as the bosses and the minion creatures kind of get stronger, you're going to need to apply more skill into how you're playing through. I've already kind of found that I've needed to do that certainly in terms of employing timing on my dodges and not just going completely all out attack being slightly evasive and using a couple of the maneuvers that I've unlocked early in the game so I'm hoping that that kind of progresses as you go and I have a feeling it will do obviously if I'm wrong there if you're very experienced with the game please let me know in the comments but that's my feeling from it so Overall, a very, very good experience, and I look forward to really sinking my teeth into it and pushing on with the story. Next up, we have Kung Fu Panda Showdown of Legendary Legends. Now, this game is very much like a Super Smash Bros. Melee, or if you played the PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale type game. Basically, if you've got either of those games, you might as well have either of those games. It's that didn't really explain that at the beginning. Um, I kind of thought it was going to be more a sort of straight fighting game. That's sort of how it almost um, showed itself to be. And when I managed to get my first opponent's health all the way down to zero and they kept respawning, I kind of got a feeling that there was a bit more to it than that. Yeah, all the characters from the films are there few of the secondary ones that I kind of didn't recognize because I think I've only seen the first film once and smatterings of the second one a bit um, but your main four heroes are there or five heroes I think it is with the master and his goose dad um, and various sort of baddies I suppose for want of a better word they're all in it um, and a couple that I certainly didn't recognize from my experience with the first film but if you're familiar with the franchise I suppose you recognize them the only problem is there's sort of various one-on-one -on -one, two on two things with the uh, versus mode but the main thing you have is a tournament and it's ten battles one-on-one -on -one battles two on two one on two and one on three as well and then there's sort of a an all for one mentality with three people and four people and yeah, as I say, it's basically Super Smash Bros. Melee. That's really all there is to it. Yeah, if you've got that, or as I said, the Superstars Battle Royale on PlayStation, you might as well just have those, because you're probably going to be more familiar with those characters than these ones. And this really was just a button masher. It's clearly intended for kids. It's a movie tie-in from a kid's film, so it's going to be, if you're over the age of about 10 it's going to get very boring very, very quickly. And finally, for the VR system, we have Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Now, this game is made by the developers that made the original game, and what they try to do in this is to create the same sort of atmosphere and tension that you experienced in the original game. However, in order to achieve that, what they do is put you in a sort of haunted fairground in the same sort of environment as that first game and you go on what is sort of a roller coaster ghost train sort of hybrid and you experience various jump scares whilst you're trying to shoot certain targets things will jump out and rush at you to create that added tension and drama and because obviously this is a VR system you can look at everything around you things get quite up close and personal at times 
and it just adds to that heightened tension really it's an interesting concept um it's a shame that like many other vr games it's still just sort of testing the waters as to what the vr system is capable of i feel that with until dawn's original game it might be possible to put you in that kind of environment in the vr system and have that kind of playthrough experience but just in vr because obviously the separate sections that you are in are very linear so there's only so many places that you can go and it would just help you to experience that game in a slightly more immersive way and actually putting you in that sort of mountain environment it would have been quite interesting had it just been a vr version of the original game but it was nice to see what they did but it wasn't really anything too original to be honest it, it seems like they were just testing the capabilities of the hardware more than anything else the shooting mechanics were okay they kind of gave you a bit of a tutorial at the beginning just so that you got a feel for it but it was fairly intuitive really um, it was just a pain having to reload all the time but you you got used to that fairly quickly okay so moving on to buy try or fly here are the three games in question. So we have Darksiders 2, and that normally retails here at $24.99 on the PlayStation Store. Kung Fu Panda is normally $11.99, and the Rush of Blood Until Dawn game is normally $15.99. Now starting with Darksiders 2, as I said, you get all of the DLC there as well. So that is an excellent deal. I would certainly suggest that you try this game. If you have played the first one and you're a particular fan of it, $24.99 for the complete edition of it with all the DLC as well is a very good price. Certainly worth $24.99. But if you're, like me, unsure of uh, exactly what you're going to be getting into because you haven't experienced it before, Try to pick this up before the games change over in January and give it a try for yourself. I think you will enjoy what you find. Next up we have Kung Fu Panda and to be honest even at $11.99 this is not worth anyone's time really. Fly away from it. As I've said it's basically Super Smash Bros but with Kung Fu Panda characters. It gets very repetitive very quickly yeah just didn't really give anything at all to be honest it's clearly marketed at very young children so if you have children or younger siblings that might be interested in it then maybe get it for them but i certainly wouldn't bother paying for it and finally until dawn rush of blood again if you have the vr system and you just want to try out as many different things as possible just to see what this hardware can do it's certainly worth trying it is only $15.99 so if you are very much into your first person shooters and you quite like the experience and the atmosphere from the first game $15.99 might not be too bad to shell out for it personally I, I don't think I would buy it myself but it's certainly worth trying just to see what else the VR system can do. So again, do try and pick this up before the games change in January. So there we go, they were my thoughts on all the PlayStation Plus free games for December on the PlayStation 4. If you have played any of the games in question, please let me know what you think about them in the comments below. As always, I will be doing a separate video later in the month for the PlayStation 3 offerings and for the PS Vita games. So please stay tuned for those. But until then, I have been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.